refused to retire. Back when my son was born, when I was 19 years old, I realized that I was responsible for the world that he had to grow up in. And, uh, and I've arranged my life around that. Everything I've done since 1977 has been about making the world a better place. And so I've, I have designed my life to make the world a better place and not like from a sacrifice place, but from that place of, I am being taken care of and I love what I do. And why would I wanna stop that when I'm making a difference and I'm having fun? So um, I had seven kids at home when I went to law school, <laughs> but I saw that being a lawyer was a way that I could actually change the system. And so I, I even now when I look back, I have no idea how I did it or what I did, but I was working full time and raising kids and going to law school and I made it. And, um, and I got out and I started creating a law practice that was based on healing and peacemaking. And, um, and, and then I realized that I wanted to connect with other people around the world who were doing those same things. And I became a connector of um, this whole um, movement of integrative, holistic, compassionate healing lawyers. And in um, 2008, I quit um, my law practice. I uh, got rid of my house and I became a digital nomad. Now this was before digital nomads were a thing. Now you actually know what a digital nomad was. Then they just said I was homeless. And uh, I went uh, went around the U.S. at first. I had a car at that point. And um, I started interviewing people who were doing amazing things in the law. And I created a website called Cutting Edge Law. And uh, the American Bar Association, which is the largest organization of lawyers in the world, actually found my website, <laughs> which is kind of a miracle in and of itself. And they asked me to write a book about what I was doing. The editor came to me and said, you know, we think this is the way law is going and that you're onto something. And they, uh, they actually recognized me as a visionary and they asked me to write this book. And then a couple years later, I wrote another book. And so uh, that opened up the international movement for me. And so in, the, uh, uh, in about 2012, I started making international trips. I've gone around the world. Sometimes I circumnavigate. Um, sometimes I go and I stay for three months. Sometimes I uh, uh, make shorter trips and uh, I just connect lawyers who are doing these amazing things into a community. And uh, of course with COVID, I quit a lot of my travel, but then I started moving on to the internet and I started having Zoom gatherings and that's been even more rewarding. So I'm hoping again to travel this year. I um, have some plans in South Africa. Uh, I want to start a law school there, actually. Um, they're already teaching my work in seven law schools in South Africa. And I've got another book coming out uh, on trauma-informed law. It's really looking at the systemic problems with the old uh, legal system. And uh, I believe that what I'm doing is creating the new system. So why would I retire? I refuse to retire because I have such a fantastic life. And the reason I have this fantastic life is I've always put service and, um, and making a difference and being responsible for my children and now grandchildren and great grandchildren as I move forward into the world. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I hope I never retire. I'm, I'm in good health and I'm energetic and I just love what I do.